This story starts for me in an anonymous hotel room in Ohio with two people who don't want to show their faces, at least not yet. How bad is the problem in this area? It's severe. It's way worse than anybody even knows. I've buried, I think it's up to 17 people now. I actually found one of my friends dead. They're telling me about a plague that has taken hold in America's heartland. Anybody can become a drug addict. Every time I put that needle in my arm, it's a slow suicide. When are you likely to shoot up again today? Probably as soon as you turn off the camera. <laughs> it's called heroin. I see that. And these high school sweethearts, Mary and Brandon, would lead me deep into its dark world. Well, I can't go in. I can't go in. Can you watch him for a minute? All right, I'll take him with me. For another couple, Mike and Darla, married with kids, this is what a normal day looks like. What? what do you want me to do? Desperate with need, getting the next fix is all that matters. My journey with these addicts is just beginning. It will span years and cross many lives. They will show me what it's like to need a drug in the ugliest way and how far you have to go to break free from its grip. I don't know what to do. America, it can be inspiring and beautiful. It can also be dark and ugly. It's so many things, but it's ours. It's our America. Some stories you cover, they stick with you. You can't shake what you've seen. It happened to me in Richland County, Ohio, place of postcards and small town values, but also of crumbling factories and hard times. Hard times that have driven many to drugs. For two years, I followed a group of addicts watching how their lives changed. But to understand how this story ends, you have to start at the beginning. You guys, can you use your phone? Call him, see if he's on. Back to when I first met Mike and Darla. I'm not answering from that area code. So the dealer's not answering? Not from this phone, you know, he won't answer. For most people, a typical day starts with a cup of coffee. For Mike and Darla, each day started with the hunt for heroin. We need something just to feel better. Right now, pills, anything. If you just shoot up once, will you feel much oh, I'll better? Feel a lot better, yeah. We can't sit there and wait, you know what I mean? We have to try and make something happen now. To be with Mike and Darla, even for a day, was to be pulled into the desperation of their need, which is how I ended up on a drug run to Columbus in a van with their one year old son. This is what you do every single day? Yeah, seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. How long can this continue, Mike? It's not how things were supposed to turn out. Just a few years ago, Mike had a job painting houses, making six figures in a good year. Married for almost 20 years, they had a home, TVs, cars, and were a close family, a normal family. Then Mike had an accident on the job. I got hurt at work, they prescribed Percocet. It just progressed from pills to heroin because it was stronger and cheaper. Soon, Darla got hooked as well. First the pills, and then, along with Mike, heroin. How many times have you tried to stop? Probably a half a dozen times, six, seven times. A bunch of times we've tried to stop. It's like food or air. You have to have it to feel normal and to live. Now, Mike and Darla were trapped by their addiction. So Mike and Darla went to go get money, and they said they were going to hustle it, so we don't know how they got it. Somehow, they managed to get cash and to get their heroin. And Darla, how are you feeling now you just shot up? Well, like before, I was you know, feeling sick to my stomach, right, a puke, and... Uh, 
I just had like the chills and all that. Now I feel better. I'm not sick a bit. It instantly takes your sickness away. So you aren't high. No. You're I'm just. Not high a bit. You just feel better. For the moment, the heroin had eased the sickness. But I wondered how much longer Mike and Darla could live like this. How much do you think you've spent on this heroin addiction over the last year? Probably 30,000, 33,000. Do you have any money now? Like five, two, about five bucks on me. I was discovering these were painfully typical stories of lives ruined. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, I can feel it now. Heroin use had tripled since it first arrived here in Ohio years back. And it was Mike and Darla's family that made that statistic grimly real for me. I found out they had three other children. All of them were addicts. The kids watched their parents shoot up and followed suit. Walked in on them in the bathroom, like the door wasn't locked. I was trying to keep it like secretive and stuff. Uh, it ain't hit me yet, but I mean, it feels good, man. Real quick. Hold them. I mean, you can't. I mean, my mom and dad, like, they were getting so bad on it, they just sold everything. The Aaron's destroyed us. It's taken everything we have. I don't, I don't care about the material things, I, I care more about what it's done to us. It's torn us apart. You know, I don't even know my kids anymore. They don't know me anymore. You know, we don't even know each other anymore. I just see my kids hooked on, hooked on it. <laughs> and I can't really do nothing about it because I'm on it, so it's just hard. For Mike and Darla, their last hope was to get clean to ensure a future for their family. But in the state they were in, that last hope seemed impossibly far away. In a short time, the American landscape had begun to look different to me. Heroin hid behind picturesque countryside. Pretty houses held dark secrets. In one of them, I met 24-year-old Mary. My mom, she cheered for the Crestview Cougars, and now the little girls cheer for the Crestview Cougars. Cheerleader family. Uh-huh. Is this you guys? Yeah. Mary was once a promising student, a high school cheerleader. But it was during that time she started using heroin. And I've blown out all my wrist veins and all the veins in my fingers. Senior year, Mary got a new boyfriend, Brandon, and a new habit. When I started seeing my boyfriend, he was already addicted, and just one day I did it. I was um, 17 years old, um, and right away I was hooked. When I met her, Mary still lived at home with her mother, a school teacher, and the daughter she and Brandon had together. As a family, they had weathered the ups and downs of Mary's attempts to get clean and her inevitable fall. She had tried to quit and failed five times already. I try to lie to myself and say that I have been a good mom, but the truth is I haven't been there half of her life. She's the one that suffers. I don't know if people will understand the whole sort of process. I mean, here you talk about how much you hate the heroin and how it's destroyed you, but in a couple of hours, you're gonna shoot up again. Mm -hmm. I have to do dope every day to be normal. If I didn't have my dope this morning, I would be laying in bed right now, thrashing around and vomiting. You know, I wouldn't be able to function. Why couldn't Mary just quit? That was the impossible part of the equation. Before she could begin treatment, Mary would have to go through an agonizing detox on her own. And writing out the painful symptoms of withdrawal was something no addict I met seemed able to do. But Mary's inability to quit was now putting more than one life at risk. My main concern is not about myself, but my baby. I'm almost five months pregnant. Why can't you just 
Like, help us understand, like, why you can't just stop. What if I start to detox and, you know, I start cramping and I lose this baby? At this point, losing a baby, you know, I don't, I, I don't want that to happen. For Mary, getting off heroin now more than ever seemed impossible. And I was about to discover that things would only get worse for her. I don't know if I know Brandon. How old is he? The police called to say that Brandon, her boyfriend, had been arrested. But what happened here? Um, I was just going driving down the road, and um, they pulled me over. And they're saying that I broke into a house. And they searched my car. And they're trying, they think I got heroin and everything. I don't have no heroin. They think I'm some big time pusher. All I am is a user. Here, which I don't really like to touch, is a, uh, it's actually just a common normal syringe, but that's what they use to uh, shoot their heroin with in his car. Also is a spoon that they're using. You can see a little bit of discolor on the spoon where they've already used it. Did you just shoot up pretty recently? A couple hours ago. What has heroin done to your life, Brandon? It's destroyed it. Brandon was heading to Richland County Jail, and all I could think about was Mary. It's in Brandon's phone. She was now alone and without a fix, and all of a sudden, it seemed like I was one of the only people she could turn to. And they do detox for pregnant women? Mary and I made some phone calls to try and get her treatment. But all we turn up is a rehab facility in Toledo, 100 miles away. Well, they said that you, I mean, if you came in tonight, you would, you would get an evaluation. They can't just, like, give you stuff. Does she say anything like they detox, though? Yeah, she said they do. God, I don't know what to do. Don't you think you should try? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. I don't know what to do. There's no better time to do it than now. <laughs> I just need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. This time, I couldn't face another surprise drug run. But as Mary drove away, I wondered if I'd made the right decision. Now I'm feeling like I should have gone with her, but I couldn't get in the car with her because she was clearly under the influence. And now we don't know where she is. I mean, if she drove to Columbus, she might not come back tonight. Mary had disappeared. Detox, even in a treatment facility, wasn't something she was ready to face. I was witnessing lives being taken over by heroin. Mike and Darla, too, were headed for rock bottom. The next time I saw them, they'd been kicked out of Mike's mother's house. Darla and their son were in a homeless shelter. Mike was under a porch. This is where I slept last night, right here. Nobody would know you were here to bother you. You know, you sleep on an open porch, anybody can come up and bash in the head or something. But under here, nobody, nobody would know you were here. I've spent now quite a bit of time with Mike. He hates himself. He is an example of so many people in this community who are literally crying, crying, crying for help. I'm tired of living like this. We just want to get help and get away from here and get away from all this stuff. I'm just so sick of it, I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand myself. They had reached a tipping point, desperate for help for themselves, but more so for their youngest child. I love that, I love that little boy. I don't know what to do. 
I don't want to lose my kids, you know, my little boy. Well, he's the only thing I have, really. Do you think maybe my human could just get away and get clean first, though? You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. That, that's really their only chance, too. I know. I do need you. Mike had finally realized the only way that he and his family were going to quit heroin was to get out of this town. But with no money and no support, could they ever make that happen? It would be another two years before I would find out. Two years later, I returned to Richland County in search of the people whose lives revolved around their heroin addiction. Mary, her boyfriend Brandon, and Mike and Darla. I didn't know if I'd find them, if they were still strung out, or if they'd be clean. But already I sensed that for Richland County, the solutions were going to be as hard as the problems, that rebuilding normal lives was not so simple. Mary had not disappeared, far from it. She'd been in and out of treatment, and in the last two years, become a familiar face at the Richland County Jail. She came in November 11th of 09. She came back in August of 09, uh, June of 09. Wow, she was in a lot in 09, huh? Her most recent stint had ended just a few days ago and I learned she'd been transferred to a halfway house to treat her heroin addiction. There was hope. Last time I saw Mary here in Richland County, she was strung out, and I'm excited to see her. I'm a little nervous about seeing her. It's been a pretty rocky couple of years for her. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Neil. Lisa Lang, nice I'm to meet you. Come in. Thanks for This us. is Mary's home now. She has 90 days here to learn how to live a life Hi. without heroin. How are you? Good. So how have things been since I last saw you? Things were a little bit rocky for a while, but I'm doing better now. And are you completely clean? I'm completely clean right now. And what does it feel like? It feels great just to feel. Like even um, to feel nervous, even to feel sad. Like it feels good to have normal emotions again. Last time I saw you, you were pregnant. Mm -hmm. What happened? I decided that it would be the best thing that um, I give her up for adoption. It was what I needed to do. It was what my baby needed. I couldn't provide for that child. I couldn't provide for myself, so how was I gonna provide for a child? For Mary, now in daily counseling, getting off heroin isn't only about kicking a habit. It's about changing your way of life, changing your entire self. If you get one part down and you do that very well, then you move on. I think the most important thing that I have to learn now is that this is a part of me. You can't ignore this problem. You have to face it every day and deal with it every day and accept it. Here, there's no access to drugs, no outside influences. It's a kind of life with training wheels, teaching the basics most normal people have. But Mary has never had a normal life. The only thing that I think it could be hard, and you'll, you'll certainly deal with this, is you're still in the same community. You know, how are you gonna deal with that? I have all the power to either let these people into my life or say, no, stay as far as away from me as you can. You're not gonna drag me down this time. Even Brandon, though? I can't let anyone drag me down. That was something I was unwilling to look at, was our relationship. Like, oh, no, no, we're gonna be together. We love each other. And I can't think like that. It's crazy, Mary, I've never, I mean, talking to you is really talking to a different person. I'm rooting for you. Thank you. What was Mary facing? She'd begun a process of change, but had anything changed in Richland County? 
I went to law enforcement to find out. Once a month, they, along with U.S. Marshals, conduct sweeps. The goal, round up low-level offenders, usually heroin users, and divert them into treatment. We're serving indictments today on drug offenders. We have a few targets that are possession of drug cases. We're gonna try and apprehend them and start them through the process. The task force practices a kind of tough love. For addicts, getting rounded up means the chance to get away from heroin. But for Officer Myers, they're just chipping away at a problem that has spiraled out of control. There's a constant battle with offenders relapsing and just, again, continue that revolving door of, of drug abuse in prison. The jail in Richland County is, at times, like a heroin clinic. One out of every five inmates comes in hooked on the drug. Behind cell doors are people at their lowest. Thomas, you mind if I speak with you for a minute? People like Thomas, a 37-year-old father and heroin addict. Are you, um, are you pretty high right now? Uh, yeah, I used earlier this morning. How much did you use? Uh, two bags. And how much do you use a day on average? Uh, it just depends on how much money I come across. Yesterday, total, I did eight bags. How long have you been using? Twelve years. It seems like the heroin's controlling my life, you know. Basically, I was homeless, you know. Sometimes I, you know, I wouldn't eat for two days. Was treatment something you'd be interested in now? I mean, do you really want to quit using heroin? Uh, yes, I do. We're here to work with you. We can't do it for you. I want you to keep putting it through your head, what we're here saying today. You know, there is an alternative to not be the same old, same old Thomas. All right. Thanks for talking with me, Thomas. Thomas has tried to quit before. Now here, he has another chance to get the heroin out of his system. But he'll have to endure the painful process of withdrawal. Three to five days of nausea, vomiting, insomnia, anxiety, depression. I've lost quite a few friends that, that couldn't beat it that are dead and buried now, so I hope I get it before it's too late. I kind of feel like this is my last chance. With all that Thomas has ahead of him, it's easy to understand why quitting is the hardest thing to do. In his jail cell, Thomas, a 37-year-old father and heroin addict, is facing his second day of forced detox. It's an agonizing process he must go through before real treatment can even begin. Hey, Thomas. When did you start starting to feel bad? Early this morning it was. I'm getting hot and I'm getting cold. My stomach cramps. I can't get comfortable. I see that you're starting to perspire, too. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope I don't start throwing up later, but... Yeah. How does this compare to what you're going to feel over the next couple of days? Uh, I'm dreading it. <laughs> this is just the start of it. It's gonna get worse. Do you still feel as strongly about trying to stay clean? Uh, yeah, I do. People in general, they think you, you can just up and quit, you know? But until you walk, a mile in a, a person's shoes, you don't actually know. So Thomas is definitely starting to get sick. When we first met him, he was really determined to try and, and quit, but I've seen this before with other addicts. As soon as that sickness starts to set in, um, I can tell that if they had the opportunity to shoot up, they would probably take it. Even if Thomas gets through detox, Will he be able to stay clean once he's back on the outside? It's a question every addict has to face, and that included Mary's boyfriend, Brandon, who I tracked down living with his father. Like Mary, Brandon has been in and out of jail the past few years. And like her, he was trying to get clean from heroin. So, haven't seen you in a couple of years. What's been going on? 
uh, doing pretty good here lately, so. How, how are you doing it? Not going around the old people, you know, old places, just staying away from all that and trying to spend my time doing positive stuff. So this, has this been hard? That life, it just, it just grew on me. And it's hard to change, you know, it's just hard to change everything, you know, because to stay clean, you got to change everything. For the last four months, he's been off the drug, but still on the edge of normal. Jobless and starting over, Brandon relies on his father, who has taken him in, as he has in the past. There he was uh, five years old, and he was a good kid then. He was probably about 10 there. We divorced when he was like 13, probably about 18, 19. He started getting into a lot of trouble. That drug has got such a pull on him that uh, he can't, he cannot stay away from it. He's relapsed so many times. You find yourself trying to give him that little nudge back on the right trail, but it's entirely up to him. Even with all the support of his father, even with all the will to quit himself, Brandon's future actually depends more on something incredibly small, a little pill, a drug called Suboxone. It curbs cravings without the high. Does Suboxone help you? Tremendously, yeah. I, I'd say if it wasn't for the Suboxone, I'd probably be using it still right now. It's expensive and hard to get, but it's his lifeline, and he's just run out. You're going to see Dr. Franz, and you owe him 300 bucks. How are you gonna, how are you gonna do it? I've pretty, pretty much tapped out my resources. What happens if you can't pay him the $300? <sighs> He'll probably discontinue me as a patient. Like an addict trying to score, Brandon will have to rely on the good graces of those who can help him get what he needs. Today, neither he nor his father have the money. What are you, what are you expecting today? Hopefully he'll still see me and let me stay on as a patient and owe him the money. Good luck. Dave? Brandon. Uh, just have a seat right there. Hi, Brandon. Hey. Good to see you. I wasn't sure I was going to see you again. Yeah, I'm here for the long run. Well, I know it's been tough for you. Yeah. So right now you're taking how many a day? Two. Zero being no craving, 10 where you can't control yourself. You're definitely going to use. Where would you put the craving now? Uh, it's like a, maybe a five, six. Okay, so we want to get that lower. Yeah. So when the cravings get bad, what do you do? I'll just try to do something to occupy my time, you know, something to get my mind off of it. That sounds uh, good to me, so continue doing that. Okay. So there's your 15. Part of your recovery is going to the meetings, uh, getting the job is great, and filling your life with good things. You stay away from your drug friends. They're just bad medicine for you. They're just going to bring you down. All right, very good. Always good to All see right. you, Brandon. Thanks. What's happening now, Brandon? Well, I'm going to go over here and get my next appointment. And then this is going to be the part where they ask me if I have any of that money to pay. Did you talk to Dr. Friends about the money? No, he didn't bring it up. But I don't think, I don't know if he remembered it or, I don't know. He said to just go ahead and we'll talk next time. OK. Is that OK with you? Yeah. OK. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Said we're going to talk about it next time, I guess. You think you got a pass? Yeah, I guess I got a free pass. All right, Lisa. Thanks. Keep me posted, OK? Yeah, well, thanks, Lisa. Bye. See ya. See you. Bye. -bye. Brandon has staved off his craving for heroin. But what about Thomas, the 37-year-old addict who so desperately wants to quit? He doesn't have the benefit of Suboxone, and it's been a long time since his last fix. So it's been 30 hours since we first met Thomas. 
when we saw him 10 hours ago, he was starting to sweat profusely and got chills. I have a feeling it's not pretty. You have a visitor. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm just really uncomfortable. Have you gotten any sleep? No, not yet. I wish this would just get over with. You want us to get out? <laughs> yeah, I kind of just want to be left alone. All right, thanks, Thomas. Yep. When heroin addicts go through withdrawal, their mind and body tell them they only need one thing, one hit of heroin to make the pain go away. It's that quick heroin fix that Mike, Darla, and their kids had all been chasing many years ago. A chase that had turned their lives into a living hell. When I last saw them, they were desperate for change. Now it was time to find them. Right now we're headed to where I first met Mike and Darla. So we're gonna see if they'll talk to us and tell us what life has been like since we met them. Inside, I only find Matt, the older of Mike and Darla's two sons, but he doesn't let the cameras in. Instead, I learn that his parents are no longer here in Ohio. They had found a way to treatment in New York City. I arrive in New York City to meet up with Mike and Darla. The last time I saw them together, they were strung out and hoping to leave Richland County. Now they're living around Union Square and have asked me to meet them there. I think I see them, actually. Mike? Yeah. Hey. Oh, hi, Lisa. Hey. How that was easy. Going? I just came right out of the subway and found you guys right away. Amazing. How are you How doing? I'm good. How are you, you guys? You look so good. Okay, you guys look completely different. You look great. I mean, the yeah. last time I saw you guys in Ohio, we were pretty slim. Last time we seen you, we was hunting for drugs, you know? Have you been clean this whole time? The entire time, 18 months. Not one relapse. Not one relapse in 18 months. I don't even think of it now. I don't even, I'm done with that life. That life's in the past. After years on heroin, Mike and Darla had succeeded where nearly 75% of heroin addicts fail. They'd gotten clean and stayed clean. But now they face another ordeal. So is this everything you own? This is basically yeah, everything, this Lisa. Everything we own. Mike and Darla were now homeless on the streets of New York. This is the consequences of, of doing heroin. We have no home. We lost everything. The greatest gift that we had is that we're still alive. Even worse, they had lost the one thing that mattered the most to them, the entire reason they'd fought so hard to get clean, their son, Caden. The courts had placed Caden in a foster home and now Mike and Darla just get to visit their son until they can prove they can be worthy parents. I've missed over a year of his life, you know, because he's been in a foster home. And I want that second chance to be a mother to him. You know, I want to be that mother to him off of drugs, you know, not using. Can't wait to get him back. You know, he's everything to me. What happens if you don't get him back? I will get him back. I have faith. I will get him back. This is Mike and Darla's life today, off drugs, but homeless. Trying to get back to a life they once had a long time ago. Their goals are basic. Try and get a job, a home, the things that courts require before they'll give Caden back to them. What are you guys gonna do now? I'm gonna go try to make a little bit of money. All right, I love you. All right, love you All right, I'll see. But even these hopes seem remote. When you're on drugs, 
drugs, you know. They say that, you know, it's the hardest thing is getting off of drugs, but not really. Right now it's harder than anything has ever been just trying to get through all of this because the frustration and the anxiety. I don't want to panhandle, I want to go to work. We wouldn't be living basically on the streets if it wasn't for Caden. We fight every day. We stay clean. We do exactly what the court asks, everything to the letter to get Caden back. It hurts to see Mike panhandling out there after everything that he's gone through, after kicking heroin and maintaining sobriety for two years. But he says that this is only one step in the effort to put his family back together and a step he needs to take. What is maybe the greatest miracle is that they remain sober and clean. Well, Darla, I know it's rock hard, but I really admire you guys. I really do. Sometimes, some days I feel stronger than others. You know, I wish we didn't have to live like this, but we do. It's not that easy. We're carrying all of our belongings on our back. We don't have a place to stay every night. So this is the homeless shelter where you've been staying for the last two months? Yeah. And what happens at 5.30? We find out if we've got a bed or not. For a, ma a man, they, it's a lot easier. There's more beds, there's more churches. Sometimes Mike can find a bed, but for women, it's harder. Darla often ends up sleeping in a chair with a room full of other displaced people. How many days has it been since you slept lying uh, down? Probably four to five days. Can you sleep sitting in a chair? No. <laughs> so I'm up most of the night. Should we see if you got a bed tonight? <sighs> what an unpredictable life they lead, not knowing if they're going to have beds every night. This is not an easy life. It will be another hard night on the road to getting their son back. The whole reason Mike and Darla are still trying to make it in New York. And I wondered how much longer they could keep on going. When I return again to Ohio, Thomas has finished his detox. Four days and 22 hours later, he has come through the worst of withdrawal. But after 12 years of using, he still has a long way to go to rebuild his life. So how are you doing? It's definitely hard. I mean, if it was easy, we all wouldn't be coming back to places like this. What's going on? Just thinking what I had to put my son through and my family. Mostly my son, because he's a seven year old boy. The last time I was in jail. As my mom, if she would bring him. <laughs> he said he didn't want to go. <laughs> he didn't want to see me here. that much effect on him when he, he was little. It's not over, Thomas, you know? In a way, this could be a good thing then, you know? It could be the beginning of a new life. I hope so. And I haven't been there for it. I'm hoping to change all that. All right, Thomas, we're going to take you to the CAC. I'm going to do my best. Try to stay clean. I'm not getting no younger, so I don't want to wind up behind bars or six feet under. My son's going to have a father. 
Thomas is beginning treatment, a journey that Mary started weeks ago. Still in recovery and away from her old life, Mary's resolve continues to grow. I did mess up. I did get off track. I did lose my way, but I'm back again. And I'm gonna keep trying till I get it. I'm not used to living life without drugs. Life is still gonna be there and I have to learn how to cope with that. Beyond the safe walls of Mary's treatment center, her boyfriend Brandon is also trying to navigate life without heroin. He too has turned a corner. He picked up a temporary construction job and has been approved for Medicaid to cover the cost of his Suboxone prescriptions. I just want to be normal because I don't even know what it's like. You know, I've never had a normal life. And I'd always wonder, like, you know, how the hell did I get here, you know, because, like, I came from a good family. He could die any night, you know, from shooting up. I don't want to bury my son. Hopefully, uh, he lives a lot longer than I do. If he wasn't here for me right now, I'd be out there pretty much. I've dug such a big hole, you know, it's really hard to get out of it, but I can do it. You know, I just got to keep my head up and eventually I'll get there, you know. Just gotta keep on trucking. Each of the people I met is still paying the price for using. And now I see that for all of them, getting clean is only the beginning. It takes time to rebuild your life. We're gonna keep moving forward and keep going, and we're not gonna give up. We're just not. 